Welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue our studies with circles and talk about a little bit more about congruent chords. In our last video, we talked briefly at the end that distance from the center of a circle to the chord is the length of the perpendicular segment from the center to the chord. Okay. And what we mean by that is if you if you look here, every time I draw a chord and I get closer to the center of the circle, that chord gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So it doesn't matter where I draw the chords. They continue to get larger and larger and larger. So if they're the same distance away from the center, it does make sense that the chords would be congruent. So the question has to be asked, how do you determine distance a chord is from the center? Well, distance is the length of the perpendicular segment from the center of the circle to the chord. So it's all about being perpendicular from the center or the length of that perpendicular segment from the center to the chord. So we can go, there's all sorts of segments we can draw to the chord, but the one that measures distance will be the perpendicular segment. Okay? So that's one of the keys here. So in our studies, we have a theorem that says, if two chords are equidistant from the center of the circle, then they, meaning the two chords, are congruent. So, here we're given that segment SA is congruent to segment SB, and that SA is perpendicular to PQ, and SB is perpendicular to BR. So, here we have perpendicular segments of equal length. So what we have here, this whole combination of givens in the context of a circle and chords is what I call that story of equal distance from the center of a circle. That's really what this is. This combination, yes, it's you know, SA is congruent to SB, and SA is perpendicular to PQ, and perpendicular forms right angles. But really, as a combination of givens, these all combined together is our story of equidistance. So, based on that, then, we would be able to prove that PQ, chord PQ, is congruent to chord PI, because they are equidistant from the center of the circle. And of course, the converse of that is true. If two chords are congruent, then they must be equal distance or equidistant from the center. So if we start with two congruent chords, okay, so if we start with, you know, AB is congruent to XY, And, well, we need something that gives us distance. So, um, OZ and OP, if those were perpendicular, well, then we would be able to prove here we have our two, two perpendicular segments. OP is perpendicular to OZ. Oh, pardon me. OP is perpendicular to AB. And OP, so OP is perpendicular to AB, and OZ is perpendicular to XY. So now we have perpendicular, we've got distance, so then we can then prove that OP is congruent to OZ. So the converse is true. They're equidistant from the center of the circle because the chords were congruent. 
and we have distance. We have the length of the perpendicular segment. So let's take a look at a couple sample problems. So sample one, we're given that segment AB is congruent to segment CD, so those chords are congruent, and OP and OQ are perpendicular, so we have the length of the perpendicular segment. So if two chords are equidistant from the center of the circle, if, pardon me, if two chords are congruent, then they are equidistant from the center of the circle, so then we know that OP is congruent to OQ. We can conclude that. So then we can go ahead and write that 12x minus 5 is equal to 4x plus 19. And we get 8x equals 24 and x equals 3. So then we know that OP is equal to 36 minus 5 or 31. And so OQ is 4 times 3 plus 19, which is also 31. So those lengths are 31. I think that's what we wanted to find. We wanted to find. How long was OP and OQ? And there we go, they're both 31. Our second sample problem is a two column proof. We're given that triangle ABC, our big triangle out here is isosceles with base AC. And we're given this is circle P, so this is the center of our circle. And PQ is perpendicular to AB and PR is perpendicular to CB. Well, we should know that AB and CB are congruent. Those two chords are congruent. So AB is congruent to CB because legs of an isosceles triangle are congruent. And then we're given perpendicular segments. So we've got, we're really working on distance here. Now we know we've got distance from the center of the circle because we've got perpendicular segments. Well, if the chords are congruent, then they are equidistant from the center of the circle. So given what we have here, we now know that segment PR is congruent to segment PQ. And our reason if is if two chords are congruent, then they are equidistant. from the center of the circle. And we wouldn't be able to say this, that they were equidistant. We can't say they're equidistant if we don't have, if we haven't already established this perpendicular. So we've got to have that. Well, if we've just proven that PR is congruent to PQ, well, doesn't that make this little triangle on the inside isosceles? Because we've got two congruent legs. So, triangle PQR is isosceles. And we can say, if congruent legs, then we have an isosceles triangle. So there's a couple sample problems, a find problem, and a two-column proof using the concept of congruent chords that are equidistant from the center of the circle. And we'll work more on this when I see you in class.